Uh, second session of the afternoon, Jeff Weiss, presenting for the very first time at KFest on the GNOME system. Uh, this was out since 1999, and it could have been where GSOS might have gone. Hmm. Jeff? Thank you, Andrew. Hello. My name is Jeff Weiss, and I'll be presenting uh, GNOME 206. Uh, it's, it was released for the. Uh, it was released in 1999 um, as an open source uh, project, and um, it's now been over 10 years, and we'll now see it for the first time demoed and talked about at Kansas Fest. Um, and, and just to clarify one thing that Andrew said, I have presented more than once at Kansas Fest. It's just the order, the uh, now the group is there. All right, so uh, let's begin. All right. Um, mm. The uh, going going on to the, uh, the acronyms of GNOME. Uh, GNO, I pronounce it GNO. Um, you can also pronounce it GNO. The G can be silent. Uh, I tend to uh, pronounce a harder G, just so it's understood. Um, being GNO. Um, the name was based on uh, what was was um, using the same uh, concept rather as the GNU, um, uh, which I've now forgot what the GNU stands for. Oh, GNU not Unix. Right, GNU not Unix. Not Unix. Not the whole point of why I spelled out GNU is not work out. So um, that's, it was taking it was the, one of the initial ideas was to create a Unix-like environment and uh, make it worker compatible. But yet, advance it to more Unix-like functionality, the ME multitasking environment. Um, I was asking Tony uh, upon when it was initially released, and uh, based upon the copyright date, it was 1991. Uh, he believes it was available earlier. Um, I just remember I was first aware of it uh, around 1992 upon my introduction to the internet. Um, so. Oops. I'm not really certain all the details, but um, I just threw information on the screens based upon the uh, facts I could find them. And no, I, I was not involved with development or with the initial uh, users, so I don't know that level of history. Um, due to the market, the GNOME was a commercial product uh, sold for about $100 or so. Um, as when Ego Systems uh, closed business in 1997. Uh, Jawi Bazaar, who I think that's just how his name is pronounced, if not, I apologize. Uh, I'll let someone who, uh, uh, Jawi, yes. Jawi uh, Bazaar. Bazaar. Um, uh, with him being uh, the uh, owner or president or some, level, some type of person who runs the company Procyon, who initially, I assume is Procyon, and I kind of screwed that name up too. Again, not involved with that at all. Um, when the last commercial <coughs> vendor selling GNO uh, closed business, he decided to uh, release the application as open source. So uh, version 2.04 was the version at that time. Um, I just remember when I bought GNO in, I believe it was uh, late 1995, perhaps as late as early 1996, uh, version 2.04 was out. And um, so, uh, from that time frame, well, I guess between 1995 and 1997, it wasn't that much time. But um, uh, I'm pretty sure 204 was out for a while before I got it. I was keeping an eye on it, um, you know, as, uh, as aware of it, but um, I didn't get it until a bit later. And um, just mental note, uh, not mental note, note that. Um, I'm not going to claim that you probably only want to run it under System 6.01 uh, because there's no purpose running any older version of uh, the system software. And that should have been system software, not GSOS. I realized that was a bad typo. Uh, because the GSOS version is 4.01 or 2 or something like that, but system software 6.01. Uh, so do not take that slide as the proper way of <laughs> versions and names. <coughs> Uh, so, uh, how did I get started with GNOME? Um, I'll probably fill in more details a little bit later in the discussion, 
but I'm um, looking at, you know, what can I do for KFest this year? And I uh, was looking at a couple different things, and um, <clears throat> certain things didn't pan out. Uh, and, you know, as you know, we get closer, 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 it's like, what, what should one do for a presentation? I said, let me try this GNO thing again. I tried uh, installing 206, you know, years ago, uh, three years ago or something like that, three or four, and failed miserably. I couldn't find any documentation. The, uh, uh, the GNO website uh, or FTP site didn't have the information anymore, and it, it was basically going, I want to try it out. Well, rephrase that. Trial version 206, I had 204. Um, I never, uh, I wanted to run it under emulation because I prefer using that um, versus trying to, you know, run it on real hardware for the time for the time being. I got some, you know, random hardware issues and stuff that um, it's just easier to do everything under emulation for me. And I wanted to try out the 206. Um, I mean, I knew that you know, it, it was released, you know, I can't remember what year, but after verifying it was 1999, knew the open source and all that. Um, and so I said, let me, you know, see if I can get something with GNO ready for KFest. That was two months ago. Obviously, I did. And um, part of this, uh, part of the, um, why I wanted to look at GNO was I strongly felt that GNO, and again, I knew nothing about it at that time, would be a great component to try to take the Apple II GS to the next level. Had, when I was first involved with KFS in 1996, um, I, I hooked up with Richard Bennett and you and one up. Um, and on that Saturday night of KFest, uh, we got together and there were a few other KFesters around. And we discussed, well, hey, look at this. Because at the time, you know, there was, there was you know, a, a sort of, not a promise, but there was a lot of, you know, activity that there was a TCP being developed for GNOME, and you know, it was now, you know, calculated from 1986 today, it was like, what, 14 years later? And it still hasn't showed up. <clears throat> and so, um, at that time it was decided, that it was, and the um, certain people have believed of, uh, uh, believed that there was an unofficial, uh, that unofficially it was never going to show up. And we, it basically that has proved itself. Um, so Richard went, and Hoff went off and worked on developing TC TCPIP, which became Marinetti. And Ewan uh, started working on a, on a web browser. And I got, I got involved with that about a month and a half afterwards. Um, and after proving that I could handle spectrum scripting, um, I was heavily involved with the development of the web browser for it to be released nine months after it came out after KFest 1996. Um, so at that time, you know, without any real, you know, name, uh, without any credit to my name, uh, was put into an environment where I saw that we could take the two chips to the next level, at least internet-wise. And, you know, ever since then, it's like, okay, what's the next big thing, you know? Um, and I mean, and, and I've sort of like you know moved to the back burner um, for the last several years or so. Um, over the last KFresh or so, you know, there's been you know talks and rumors and discussions of, well, what would it take you know to take the two just to the next level, and um, and that's why and I really took that to heart in the past year, and um, I even made some notes um, back in September, uh, confided with with at least one other developer in terms of. You know what I thought. You know, should the direction should be, and you know, I got to get feedback from another developer, and um, and my list, you know, said one of the, one of my concerns is we need. I would like to see the TGS to get to POSIX compliancy. Okay, big dream, but um, we can get closer to POSIX compliancy than basically we don't have it now. Essentially, with with you know, there's a little bit. Um, it will be neat to get access to all this great open source software available for all this all these other computers, just compile it, put it on the 2GS, and then man have an instant new source of software available to it. Available to it. And um, GNOME 206 is actually a great foundation to start going down that path. Um, and, and after you know working with it, I I had seen 
some of the limitations. I'll talk about some of those. Um, there are, you know, some areas where it does shine, and I'd like to, you know, highlight those. Um, and we'll see, you know, of course, you know, please ask questions as we come along. I sort of tangented from where the slide had originally started. Um, but I'm actually really excited about what GNO can do. I want to share it. Um, I want to see what kind of excitement can be buzzed, what kind of excitement buzz can be generated with this. Um, and with the current 206, it's um, in 18 archive files, SH key, uh, GS trinket files, um, essentially in floppy distance size. All right. And we're going to go through the whole um, uh, installation on an emulator, so it's going to be faster than a real hardware. Uh, so it'll be done fairly, relatively quickly. Uh, two URLs before we go to where the uh, install uh, archives are. Um, I, the uh, GNOME website, which historically had the software, um, is very bad trying to find GNOME files. So um, years ago, it got mirrored. And so that's really the best place to find things. Um, what got me, what the piece that I was stuck at trying to install GNOME 206 years ago was because I didn't realize about the install manual for 206. And one of the reasons is, is because it's in PostScript format, not in any modern day, it's not was a tech, was HTML, um, not PDF. And that was the reason why I got stuck. Once I discovered it was a PostScript file, it all worked out, less than 24 hours. GNOME 206 was, all, was running on my cakes. Um, happy as can be to see what, to see what can be done next. Um, not only that, but the source code is no longer accessible through either the uh, GNOME website or through the CVS repository, which was running at least at one time. Uh, that CVS repository is now closed down, um, which is a shame. Um, Looking forward, if there's any future interest by the developers in this room to help expand GNO, um, Devin Reed, who is the last maintainer, or slash current maintainer, um, and, uh, and everything he has said in the past 10 years is he's still interested in you know doing more, but you know there's like nobody there to help him. Um, I'm sure you know with his family and everything that um, he's busy with real life stuff from um, just you know general hobbyist things, but you know with more people uh, being involved to do more things, you know you get the, the feeling of you know I'll spend a lot of time you know making this work, you know uh, like how we all do things around here with Apple too. So the source code is also at the uh, mirror site, and um, uh, at that end um, it, that's the full 206 source code. <coughs> So, uh, based upon the information of the FAC, uh, what is GNOME? It's a, um, a preemptive multitasking environment. Um, there's two, ty two types of multitasking, uh, preemptive and uh, cooperative, if I've got the right name. And um, cooperative is like the, uh, uh, the other one that designed for the TGS, which was the manager, uh, where it relied on uh, the event loop um, uh, triggers to, or that really says pulling, the event loop pulling to tell a process to run or not run. Um, uh, well, actually, when, when you go through the event loop, the, it'll, another application can run while another person, well, the, well one application is waiting for event. That's a better way to explain that. Alternatively, with the GNOME method, um, you rely on interrupts to stop an application, start another one, uh, which is actually the right <coughs> model when Mac OS X, when Apple rather, was developing Mac OS 9, they were still following the cooperative method, a method. And for those who use 9, it was horrible in terms of reliability. It crashed all the time. Well, it's my experience. That's what I saw. Um, versus when Apple moved to Mac OS X, it became rock solid for its native software for that environment. <laughs> um, and so the <coughs> argument I've been making over the last year, you know, within the RC channel in terms of the direction to go, some people say, well, we should look at the manager. Absolutely not. The GNO has a preemptive environment built in. That's the right way to go. We saw where when the Microsoft screwed up with cooperative. We saw where Apple screwed up with cooperative. There's absolutely no reason to even consider doing cooperative on the 2GS because we've seen it doesn't work. Preemptive is the only way to go. And it has it's already built into, into GNO, which is, you know, if we want multitasking the TGS, this is where it is. 
and, it, and that works. Um, interactive shell. Um, uh, basically, there's a, a, a Unix-like command line shell. Um, and for those who have worked with one, uh, it, that is unfortunately another weak area within GNU that it's a very, 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 very limited shell. And uh, of course, one of the things that's needed is to actually get a you know more modern shell like board or whatnot. Um, GNU has a great base, uh, a great uh, basis. I think that's a good enough word uh, for a powerful uh, programming environment, and, and that was a good description at the time. And I'll still will agree with that one. Uh, it has uh, some level of um, uh, well, it has a lot, of, a, a lot of you know old. When I say old, don't forget this was developed back in the early 90s, 1991 or so, or it might have been starting even before that. But in terms of what the kernel has, it's 20 year old in terms of a kernel. We're now 20, it was now 20 years later, and you know what? It's it shows its signs of age in terms of getting modern software to work on an older kernel. So it has a great start as a uh, for powerful programming environment. It needs a bit of work. Fortunately. There's lots of source code out there uh, in terms of kernels. We have, and, and just going down the list, we've got you know Open Solaris, we've got Linux, we've got BSDs, a whole bunch of BSDs. Um, someone mentioned Linux the other day, but I don't think that's open source. Um, so at least from open source, uh, Solaris, Linux, uh, BSDs, and I think someone else mentioned something else the other day. But you know, there's a lot of places to go to to um, you know get this code, compile it, make it work, make it better. And uh, one of the things that was um, advertised was a, a consistent uh, uh, text and serial interface. Um, the 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 text-wise, 100% agree. Um, I, I it, it's very different from any other text-based programming. If you're used to um, AppleSoft Basic or um, perhaps even some JSOS uh, programming for text-based, uh, it's. For those who are used to that type of programming, it's going to be different. It's going to be a challenge. There's going to be a lot of new, a lot of new stuff to learn, and that's some of the stuff I've been learning over the last couple of months. Is seeing, you know, just understanding the new way of doing things. Granted, we've been programming text-based apps um, through like Term iOS, curses, etc., like that, but even a little bit lower level of curses under some sort of Linux or Unix. You got the right experience for GNU because it's going to work the same way. Uh, in terms of serial, serial is also you know having that same level of direct, uh, you know, uh, standard in, standard out. It has all the connections for that, uh, which is great. Um, I and again don't want to you know bring up so early, but I might as well comment on it right now. Um, but the serial connection, the serial connectivity, is a little on the flaky side. I, there's at least one bug that will um, cause things to hang. But we'll go through the demo to see things working. Um, and hopefully it will impress it enough that it says, oh, look, it works. But if you use it long enough, um, it's not quite as reliable. But most of us will just use keyboard mouse input. Um, so we're not going to rely on, on, on serial. And with the way the internet is today, um, we're going to rely on ethernet, not serial anyway. Not as if we have any ethernet, ethernet support under GNU, which is another thing I think will be the right approach is to get a, some sort of public, some open source. Um, IP stack implemented, well, the, add the Ethernet layers, the IP, la IP layers, TCP layers, et cetera, make it work. Um, and uh, we can actually get you know, a decent networking environment uh, for the GS. <clears throat> so uh, I've got a couple screens before we start doing the uh, install of GNU. Or can, no, <laughs> that's, I'm here, I'm using the GNU uh, desktop environment. But uh, it's going to be, you know, I will I'll slip every so often. So, um, having had installed 206 on a system that had 204, um, there's still some random 204 files lying around. So I recommend not ever, 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 ever install 204. And if you have, to start from scratch. Your life will be easier. I still haven't cleaned my system up yet. Um, if you're going to be also doing development under GNOME, you know, uh, that you want the latest Orca software, and specifically because most of the stuff in C, you want Orca C 2.1 or higher. Um, if you read through the facts, the old, old documentation, of course there's support for the older Orca C 2.0.x, 
um, but you're going to kill yourself if you are trying to support that. Um, and if you have these old environments around uh, within your environment, I would definitely advise to start from scratch. Um, this is so cheap. So, um, I'm going to describe a set of, a sequence of steps to install Gnome that's actually slightly different from the instruction manual, or from the uh, documentation manual, rather. Um, partially because uh, um, I, I, I do add a few extra steps, none of the, none of the extra steps actually help, but um, I'm actually thinking, you know, look, thinking forward, what would it take if we're trying to make this a professional environment, um, you know, to make it more user friendly? Right now, it's challenging. Uh, but if you are, have been comfortable with a TGS for you know a number of years, or if you work professionally within a Unix type of environment, um, you may stumble a little bit. But you know it's it will it, it works out. And following the steps, I basically follow the steps, and I realized that with a few words didn't quite make sense with the way they were written. So I you know had to you know try a few things before it actually worked right. But um, generally, the steps are completely correct up, up in the documentation. And I, you know, sort of re, um, re paraphrase some of the steps here, with changing a few things along the way. Um, but again, the reason I changed is because I'm thinking, you know, what if we're if everything was rebuilt from scratch, and to, and to make this, you know, more friendly for the more novice users, um, this makes more sense in terms of how to set the environment up. And, and I think this is my way. And I'm, I'm not going to try to claim that, you know, this is the way to do it. And I'll certainly take input and feedback if you know the, if people think there are better ways. Um, but at least this was a start to, you know, let's try to formalize this a little bit more than, you know, just do this and do this and make sure you remember this, you, this name and type it in every single time. I'm thinking, well, let's, let's, you know, stick with something that makes a little bit more sense here. All right, so we need at least three partitions. One is a, um, a, file, a partition of about 10 megs for all the installer files. Uh, remember, it's um, 18, 800K, uh, roughly 800K disks. Um, and you have to then, of course, oh well. Um, then you have, um, with the way 206 was written, they have a, uh, a one eight small HFS file system about the size of a floppy drive. And you know, as much of this space as you can allocate for your uh, of a Prodos partition for you know itself. And you know, if you want to you know really go go to town with it, you know, make it as large as possible for the full 32 meg Prodos file system. So we gave three names. GNO, GNO HFS, HFS, and GNO installer. Um, and the GNO dash HFS is because HFS supports dashes the file name, the dots are pro dos limitations for the uh, um, installer directory. And I gave the link to download all of the um, uh, shrinkage files for GNO. So, um, let's go through the steps here. you know, blank environment, which is going to be, what's the difference between you? Yeah, I'm not going to start over here. Okay. Um, yep, that's the right one. Uh, so I have my GNO, which is a blank disk. I have my GNO HFS blank disk, which you can see it's, well, I made it 32 meg because it's for virtualization, I think it's bigger than one. And uh, so I've got HFS and a GNOME installer. So I've got the GNOME GNO installer. And the first thing we want to do is unshrink uh, the uh, GNOME boot disk. We're going to unshrink the, the entire contents into that directory. So GSHK. this, I want to create a new directory 
for to remove all my SSH, SSH key files into its own directory. I'll call it package. I'm not going to pluralize it at packages because that's probably how I would like to see you know go into a final revision. So it's more like you know you know version 1.08 you know 001 to try things out. So I don't want to. Lots of steps to do it, but um, it's going to be worth it at the end. So, get a little small screens of the GS. All right, so once we have this, so this GNOME boot environment here is actually GNOME 204, because apparently there's a, there's a bug in GNOME 206 where you can't run single user, single user mode with 206. But 204 uh, was actually initially designed as, well, 2.0 was originally designed as single user version versus a multi user environment. Um, that was a, you know, added somewhere in the 2.0 uh, time period. And uh, so that works fine. But there's other problems with 204 that you really, really don't want to use. And now I don't know why the uh, doesn't want to work. So. Is this 2.0.6 or is that? Uh, that's the shell. Oh, uh, I see. The kernel's 204. We'll open that up again. For Sweet 16, I used to have to restart my uh, emulator. <coughs> and then the second time I run it, it goes. Huh? Not working. Great. Um, it doesn't work now. Ah, uh, sorry. It should, it should have actually, you know, brought up the shell. Try restarting the GS on your emulator. And then I just I just did. Oh, you did? Yeah. Huh. Have you tried rebooting the emulator? I just did. That's what it's did. off right now. I have two yeah. different versions of Cakes running here, and uh, I'm killing the uh, this one. Uh, do I have the shell in here? I have been. Uh, I recently faxed it. That Try this one one more time. Um, we've got SSKs. I moved it over. Well, they don't want they don't want this moved over, but I moved it over anyway. And it should have. Oh, that's right. I have to modify namespace. Ugh. Stupid, stupid, stupid. We forgot that step. I'm so sorry, guys. This is like you know paper copies of all this stuff too. All right. So we have this. So we, uh, first I do that, and um, I'll edit the notes later. Where we put some the this site. So now we have to edit. So, one of the things about um, GNO is with, GNO tries to emulate a Unix like, Unix like environment in terms of having all of the file systems under one uh, file hierarchy tree. Hi 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 yeah, that word. Hierarchy. Yeah, that word. Um, GSOS doesn't have that as model. Every disk is a separate uh, file hierarchy. hierarchy. <coughs> so, um, and of course, if you don't try to do the same thing with the Windows, Windows has C drives, C, D drives, E drives, whatever. If you try running a Unix like environment like Sigwin, um, GNOME has to do the same thing what Sigwin does. It has to, work, it has to do a fake, you know, slash user, slash, uh, or slash, slash bin, slash Etsy, slash whatever. And then if you want to access your other drives, you have to, you know, back out in a different directory structure. So GNOME works the same way. Within GNOME, you have the namespace uh, file to uh, manage that level of detail. So we're going to have to edit the file. And I, you can use Teach. I just have to use Herbies because it's an NDA. I don't have to you know, open up new apps. So go through this. Uh, we're on the installer, Etsy, namespace. And um, that's the problem because it, wa it, wants the, uh, it wants that to be GNOME.boot by default, and I'm calling it GNOME.installer. So I'm breaking everything. So I really should have said this well, we're going to follow their Wouldn't instructions. Wouldn't it be quicker just to rename the partition to GNOME.boot? Well, I guess I was changing things around from my initial get go, saying, oh, we'll invent this new installer along the way. And, well, you know, mm -hmm. that never. Or at least use a uh, find replace. 
fine, make it easier. And you're going to have to run the, the kernel to uh, start looking that Alright, so from here, uh, as my presentation um, had mentioned, presentations over the folder. Uh, so you double click on current, and then you're going to have to run those five commands. Um, set the, uh, the downloader, uh, environment variable, and then uh, CD into your uh, file systems and run the, ins the installer scripts. So the file systems show up at the root? Who, uh, <coughs> to a mount folder? No yeah. installer is a file system, there's a drive. And it's a drive, partition, it, yes. And they all show up at the root of the virtual file system. They're like <coughs> at slash? Yeah, the, the slash doesn't exist under... under I understand, but yeah. you typed it here, so my assumption is that once you're in the environment, you refer to it now. Oh, um, Good, very good question. Um, I, no, no. Uh, name, namespace does the whole. It's gonna. Yes. Sorry. Yes. The the name. Gno has within the Gno directory structure. That's where you have your slash sc slash user slash whatever, and that doesn't then remap back to the Apple, which I would thought was a better way of doing things, and perhaps um, that should be a, a way to modify things. Uh, well, there's ways of, um, I don't want to say that's probably the better way. Um, I'm just asking it's, it's something to think about. No, no, it's not. The, the slash. This slash here is, and, and well, I, I use slash, but you can use a colon as well at that point, because that's just using the, the disk. That's independent of the directory tree. Uh, you, if you want to do slash etsy, slash etsy has to exist within namespace to know that it's a, uh, it's a folder, really a, a folder, not a uh, volume. Right, I'm comfortable with that. I was just concerned about the drives you're at. The yeah, I said before you have to have three partitions. So if, so if you reference it that way, it doesn't have to be in, in namespace? Right, that way you can't. Cool. Right, yes, yes. Good question. And I know I, know I, I, know I did spe specifically state that. All right. So what I'm actually going to do is I actually have a script um, already that has those commands. I'll just um, run that. Let's copy that script and run it. So I don't have to remember typing the commands. First name in it, you know about that boot. So. Yeah, back in the root directory. Good. Because single user mode, not multi user mode. Copy hd2 slash. So now it's going to uh, automatically shrink the files um, into uh, the directories. Um, it's going to uh, copy a few files that belong into the uh, GSOS system folder. And it's just going to copy everything automatically. So while it's doing this, um, I can spend a few moments answering questions um, or, or if there's anything specifically that people want to see, can we make notes about that as well? Yes, I saw Sean had a question. I do whenever I work on local bridges that are in 206 so that it's low, 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 low. 
I've heard the glitches and so are people working or yeah, is anyone still working on them? Uh, as far as I know, the answer is, that is no. I know Deborah Reed said like he's I know Deborah Reed is still serious about Gano, but um, the assumption we should make is um, there was no updates to Gano after the two oh six release. Um, only so there's no, no, nothing that went into the uh, the uh, source code that's um, on the mirrors right now. So that's the assumption we're going to make. And it's possible, and I would see it as this is now the time for the community to step in and, you know, uh, lead an effort. So, okay, great. Looks like it's all done. When I make that hand gesture, it means it failed. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> I mean, swing your hand like you did. Oh. But no, that's good. I, was there another question that, that yes? Uh, so you concluded that GNOME is the correct basis for POSIX compliance in spite of the problems with that you want to clean up. GNOME, because GNOME, GNOME it's a good start, GNOME, right? GNOME, it's GNOME, and it is far, it is not even close to POSIX compliance. I know, but, but you if want you want to take it to, to just to become as close to POSIX right. as possible, GNOME being open source and you don't have to rewrite everything from scratch, okay. this is the, the easiest, fastest way to start. You feel that it's, there's enough there that it's a good basis to start with. Uh, you have no other choice. Right. Yes. Do you have, do you have a question? Um, okay. Yes. Is there VI? Uh, of course there's VI. I would not Excellent. be here if there wasn't VI. I'm sold. <laughs> Let me in. <clears throat> um, uh, 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 I, 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 we'll hold that question there for right now. Okay. Um, I, uh, you will see some of my... Um, Nuances, I think, might be the best word. Yeah, I'm a VI, not Emacs. I like uh, GNOME, not KDE. You know, you, you'll see my bias being pushed through here. So yes, uh, it will be VI. So right now, at this point, uh, you have to reboot the GS because this is GNOME 204, single user mode. You basically can't exit from it, so you just reboot. So that's going to installer. Um, actually, there was, uh, there was actually another step in there, which um, I'll just skip here just to uh, move things along. And I'll throw it on the slide. Come on, Linda. Throw it on the slide to show that there was another script, another line here. And there was basically, I don't think I did this on my um, GNOME 206 install, so I don't mind not doing it again here. Was, it of course recommends running these MKSOs uh, for the main pages. Um, yes, I've actually been doing this on my machine here, and it looked like the first command did everything in the second command. The well, the first two commands did everything in the second two commands. If you like the second two commands, as I understood from the README, um, just were for if you did not do the HFS partition. Oh, okay. Um, I I don't read too well. Thank you. All right, so reboot, and oh, and then the next thing is Orca M, uh, which I'm not going to go through that stuff right now, um, only because I have a my my 206 environment that I build out um, that we're going to be using for the remaining of the session. This is just you know to build a new environment. Um, it proves you've got files. HFS got files there. Um, that HFS is just header files that for development, that's not used for anything else. Uh, but you have to have it as part of the install. We've got the GNOME, oops, go away. We've got the GNOME here, which has its own kernel, which that's how you, we start 206, it has you know, all of its uh, directory hierarchies, and my computer just froze, here we go. And the GNOME install, of course, hasn't changed, so I don't have to prove that. All right, so, um, oh, the installer. Um, so I got Orca over here, and um, this is slightly not fair because my Orca actually has the 204, you know, stuff. The header files um, installed in it. It gets messy trying to. The instructions say, you know, just you know, copy your, um, well, copy languages, copy libraries, copy. Let's see, languages, libraries. Uh, probably maybe maybe shell utilities. Um, Copy those, the end start, copy those five directories over, and um, and then everything will work. As long as you're using the latest versions, you have installed 204. Um, 
the minute you start using older versions of you have two and four, there's a lot of manual work. Um, don't do it. Your slide and your statements have said copy two. And at no time have you mentioned where that two is. Oh, shit. You know what? That's because I started writing the slide, and that's where we started here. <laughs> I mean, shoot, none. Yes. <laughs> and we'll go, I'll explain that in, in the real, in the, uh, the my other environment. Uh, quick question. Once you've installed, do you need to keep that no installer partition around? No, no, you don't. Okay. Um, this, no, no. It's, I just have a lot of disk space in the emulation, yeah. so. Um, and a lot of this was for mental notes in terms of how do you want to, you know, make this, you know, more, you know, moving to the next level, um, I, putting ideas in there. And obviously, I kept renaming things, and that's what I got screwed up with. Um, with my slides right now, or with the session right now. Um, it was uh, Orca, right, so where was the copy to? Uh, you know, so we have this user, uh, uh, Lang, uh, Orca, user, Orca, it's not user, Orca, it's one place, uh, it's slash L-A-N-G, Lang, Orca, and then okay, it's four directories, languages, shell, so it's uh, whatever, whatever just said it was. That's the problem here with the GUI, you can't be WD yet. So, slash lang orca, to answer your question. Um, I, can, I can show you that I had my C and Pascal and orca and Adam, similar, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right. <coughs> Look more lovely. Wireless audio detection. Um, right, good enough. So this is the uh, the 206 install. Um, <coughs> one of the things that I found um, before, uh, one of the things that interested me interested me about you know 206 you know several um, years ago was because I found Python had been ported to. Um, uh, GNU, and at that time it was 204, I'm thinking, oh, that we need to have Python available for uh, the 2GS. Um, of course, it requires GNU. Uh, but with the way Python was assembled, uh, and, and it was basically being as close to the original distribution as, as, as possible, it does use characters that are not ProDOS compliant. So one of the things that I did was, uh, Make a GNU, which uh, was um, on an HFS file system, so I could, you know, use non-Protoss compliant file names without renaming and recompiling and all that stuff. And um, yes, I attempted to recompile Python and um, failed miserably. Um, not even close to trying to get it to work. Uh, the amount of work trying to make all the changes to make files because there's no born shell is just. I just said, you know what? We still need the born shell first. Anyway, so uh, the version of GNU I'm going to run is actually going to be the, uh, the HFS version because that's the one that I have all my toys and goodies in. So it's just a matter of copy, just doing a copy and paste from one disk to another disk. So in this case, if you want HFS to for, you know, if you want Python for support, for example, just copy your GNU stuff over to a new file system and, um, and, and use that. Um, so we're going to start GNU. Uh, with this, this is uh, when we ran the GNU uh, installer, uh, that was 204 in single user mode. As I said, 206 is, is, is set up by default as multi user mode, so it's going to prompt for a username. And uh, the default user is going to be root. Uh, the default password, I believe, is blank. Um, I have since, of course, um, made an effort to uh, keep things more locked down, so I do have a password on my account, and I took the first time doing it wrong. So now we have a, uh, a, a what looks like a Unix shell, and you know more or less, you know, we can do all of our fun Unix things in it. Um, anything people want to see specifically, to, you know, to be impressed, since I can't think of anything right now due to um, a bit of tiredness from the last several days. Yeah. 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 Perfect. I love you guys. Um, <laughs> so, uh, do we have any, any interesting files right here? Uh, 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 Message of the day. Uh, well, it would be like GSHRC. And um, 
I should talk about the shell. The, the default <coughs> shell is the, uh, GNO, uh, the GNO shell, which is GSH. Um, and, and GSH has this, uh, the, the uh, RC file, GSHRC. There's no DOS because Protoss doesn't support uh, you know, DOS files. Um, and so this is an example file that I believe this came um, installed by default. It looks like it did. And uh, I don't believe I have custom, customized this at all. So you can see the syntax for GSH. Um, and uh, it looks very, very close to CSH. Um, I would probably best describe it as a subset of CSH, uh, but nowhere close. Uh, for example, there are no looping structures for scripting. There's no while, there's no for, uh, no ifs. Um, and that's the reason why the installer is all these manual steps, because you need that for, um, uh, for scripting the automated steps. <clears throat> And my thought was, oh, wouldn't it be neat if we had uh, Python to do it? And anyways, uh, but that requires just to some more work, and and um, didn't really and realize I don't don't know enough Python to actually write something like that. But uh, if if we want something uh, more automated, uh, Python will be a very quick, dirty hack to get started. So VI. Anyway, uh, this is this is technically Stevie, S T E V I I E maybe at the end. Um, and it's not the real VI, what I mean by real VI, it doesn't have EX uh, support. Um, I have found that uh, some of the commands th that I use in VI uh, don't work. Uh, one of the things I like doing is colon WQ uh, bang to quit or w colon, is colon WQ, WQ bang. Colon Q bang? Uh, yeah, all right. It's, I think it's Right, yeah, so uh, I can do colon WQ but not colon WQ bank. So it's, it, it, there's something, just remember you have to do it two steps instead of one step. Um, otherwise, uh, mo basically most of EVI stuff works fine. Of course, uh, I like EX support every so often for my global search for plays, but once you realize you don't have that, um, you know, anything special you want to see in VI, you can do one shift G, like shift visual G selects. the bottom. What was that? Can you do like visual selects? No way. Shift V, Control V, and then inverse the text while you're selecting. Shift V? Yeah. I don't do that. Uh, I don't know. I don't I do don't something. Maybe you would undo it. Uh, only it one level undo. So I would say no. So <laughs> I answer. probably not. This, Stevie's is like 10,000 years old. Right. Um, and if you're talking about something Vim versus VI, I know my VI, I don't know Vim. Yeah. Uh, and I'm not sure. Well, Anyways, so does does Gnome have like can you pipe one command into another command? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah we have, it has full pipes. Cool. Yes, yes, Could that's one of the advantages of it. Excellent. Could you do something like diff backward uh, backward comma you know so it executes pwd close backward comma space uh, the sub execution. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. In other words, the back quote GIF character. And then PWD. Oh, no, no, back quote. Back, uh, no, back the GSH quotes. does not do back quotes. Okay. Right. Can and again, you, do, you know, this uh, is why we want a real shell. Can you do LS L pipe grep uh, circumflex D? That's carrot D. Carrot. The yeah. upward point. Oh, right, 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 right. right. Oh, yeah, it does, it does wall parts. Thank you for asking that. And of course, there's no, there's nothing with a D when we do an M here. Um, okay, maybe it doesn't do wild quotes with the carrot. Uh, well, I'll do it this way, M star. So, you just it use the right D. set of wild cards. So that would work with cool. D. What would, Looks do? like the grep means. You said M star instead of carrot M. Is that what you just did? Right, you yes. So would D really star sure. work instead of carrot D? And I'm assuming that you want carrot D of, 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 carrot, of files that begin with the carrot I want a list D. directories. It, it, the carrot normally it starts. Oh, the, the first, 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 first. Oh, well, right, but this shell doesn't right, put right, the D at the beginning. Yes, I'm looking at all things. So it wouldn't work nothing. anyways. Yeah. Too tired, can't think. So we do carrots. Dash here. I don't know. I, I haven't tested it all the regular expressions. Okay. I was well, going to try it. It would have to be egrep, anyways. If you need to be in a directory that actually has directory. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll, I use it in regular Unix. That's the interesting part. There you go. That should be more interesting. What? Uh, 
load the carrot. Come on. I, I spelled that right. Yeah. Okay. I believe the answer to that is no. no. Right. You're still in Etsy, though. Maybe there's Maybe just no directory. Despite typing CD directory. on top. I really think we need a show. Yeah, how are you still in Etsy? Oh, because dot dot, I can't go dot dot from Etsy. That's part of namespace. Namespace slash, you can't CD to slash. Because that doesn't, that, that, it doesn't, that really doesn't exist. So maybe it works. So let me, can we go here? I have it. This is what I have. Now. I have to do, I have to do dot dot slash, uh, like, uh, user or something like that, or, or ho. Okay. Confirm. No, it doesn't. I know I have directories that. I confirmed that there are Ds there. It should be, but. All right. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, one of the comments I was going to make was if one was used to Gnome 204 and moving to 206, um, there are at least two commands which were not brought over. Um, I have not. I have not sat down and actually looked at you know the full list of commands from one to another. So there might be more, but the two commands that aren't included is C S E E and here H E A R. Um, but, Mainly because those were not open source in the first place, um, and they came from some guy's last name was McKinsky. I forgot his first name, so I apologize to this uh, gentleman. Um, and, and the C is for playing South Soundsmith audio files, and no, that was here. Here is for the Soundsmith audio files. The C is to display uh, super high res pictures, um, and they actually don't work too well um, if you're trying to. Um, Multitask them under you know, so there's actually a good thing that they got dropped. Yes, that's a question. Can you do anything like echo dollar all caps home? In other words, you want oh, to yeah, do we have the environment variables, all the environment variables are there. Right. Um, uh, we can actually Pass, set to all see all the environment variables, which cool. would scare me because that's very Windows like. I'm going, ah, Windows, no, um, but yeah, if you want to, you know, just see home, that's fine, yeah, uh, and as, like path. Sure, yeah, you can, I got path up there, right there. Oh, okay. So I don't really need to repeat everything. Right. Um, does, so it, does it, you said there was a compilation environment. Is it, like, how do you compile things, or do you have to go into Orca? Okay, do good, it? good, uh, very good question. How am I doing with time? Uh, 4.24, I started, so I got about another half hour. So, timing-wise, we're not doing too bad here, and that's why I, and that's why I wanted 90 minutes. So good questions, because um, I'm not remembering you know, all my steps going, going through what to do. So thank you for this. Um, one, of the, one of the comments, one of the side comments I was going to um, want to lead up to the compiling for, um, for, for this is for those of you who are used to Solaris, um, again, I'm, I'm glad with my experience with, with Solaris, I'm going, okay, you know, the, 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 um, the steps that we go through for managing software packages under Solaris, one has to think often the same way under GNOME. Uh, under GNOME. So um, arguably, I'd like to say, you know, if you have some Solaris experience with uh, development, um, more, more on more the side of porting, but I'll call that still development, um, one has to keep the same frame of mind of under GNOME. Um, under Solaris, you know, uh, and, and, you know, years ago, you know, GCC wasn't included. Uh, you had to buy Sun's compiler. If not, you download GCC, and uh, then you had your different. You had your uh, GCC versus Sun CC, and you had Make versus GMake, and you had you know, all these different environments. Um, so um, it's, it's often you found that you couldn't use Sun's Make. You had to use GMake uh, for your compilation. And often you found out you had to like pass additional um, parameters uh, for your compilation environment, and because of that, that frame of mind is also needed under GNOME. So, uh, if you if you if for those of you who know Orca C, uh, there's no make um, that doesn't exist. Orca wants to do, wants to do its own thing, um, and one of the things why I liked about GNOME, and but where you got some partial working, but it doesn't need, does need a lot of work, is it does have limited, limited Unix compatibility for making files. Um, especially if you want to use the pass the dash L for libraries, the dash, 
H for include files, if I remember right, or was it D? Um, no, dash D is for defines. Um, right. So I for include, thank you, yes. Uh, so you have D, D for defines, I for include files, things like that. So the stuff that you want to have, the tools are available within GNOME, the tools are developable under Orca. So um, one can argue it'll be for porting software, you can expect a slightly, you, have, you expect less work to make it happen. Um, and you know, I was hoping you know, to have this that great demo to show things, but I won't have a great demo, but at least I can you know, wave my hand and say, look, if you actually do this, it will work. Um, so what we have under um, Gnote, what, what Gnote 206 does provide is DMake for compiling it. Uh, it was written years and years ago, but it converts, when you run DMake, it will convert the make file, it'll take a make file and convert it into a format for Orca, um, and so Orca can do it. Um, it doesn't always work well, especially for the, uh, the defines. If you're redefining, if you're just you know, passing like a dash D foo um, and not assigning foo a value, it's going to work fine. But the minute you assign foo a value, you know, that extra, extra work has to happen, and um, it's extra work. And I, at this point, I don't remember how to make it work. I ran into a problem earlier today, or yesterday sometime, and I said, screw it. I'm not going to, you know, you know, you know, relearn how to do this in an hour's time when I got other things to work on. Um, the information is there. And if you re if you man, uh, well, I forgot two things. One was uh, DMake. So DMake was for the make replacement um, for using the Orca compiler um, with DMake. You want to use OCC for the C compiler instead of Orca's CC. So, and again, like Solaris, you use GCC versus SunCC, and you use GMake versus Make. You know, if you can think like that, you can think like an OME. So I found out, found out going, okay, well, this is what we do anyway, so why not you just practice, you know, different commands? Uh, so, uh, one of the problems, problem, one of the limitations, one, uh, one of the issues with uh, GNO is that it has very, very, very poor man page support. Um, a lot of this stuff is missing. Most of the stuff is not there. Um, you can't even LS, so you don't even know what parameters are actually supported in the GNO LS. Well, I'll have to say, well, who cares if the main page is there or not, because this LS is so limited in the functionality that we probably want to you know, get a more modern LS and just use that because you know, it comes with the main page, so we kill two birds with, or kill two birds with one stone. Um, now, man OCC. So we've got the um, OCC to show you know, the parameters for the uh, compiler. Um, you, know, you can read, read, read that, at least that was recommended. And then, so it's and, kind of a uh, command yeah, line, it's a command line front end to Arcus C. And there's no, um, and there's no main page for, for DMake. So um, I believe that's the same DMake if you Google about, you know, find a version, the version that's out there is the same version that was made back in 19, let's say, you know, 93, 94 time period, um, that's the version. Uh, I'm not too, too familiar with this whole make, the make part of the environment, but I just know it will mainly, a lot, if anything beyond the very, very simple make file of, you know, you know, foo.o and then foo.o require foo.c, anything more complicated than that, um, I just don't, don't trust if it's going to work right or not. Um, so, uh, <coughs> software. Um, I got, I, so I made an effort to, um, I spelled that wrong, it's going to uh, take a while for the, my slot 6 drives to time out, so I can give it a moment here. This is one disadvantage of kegs that you can't yet disable the slot 6 drives uh, because uh, the. You um, slot 6 to your car. The kegs is hard coded to uh, have a. Uh, a uh, Apple two, Apple, you know, two plus disk two drive and slot six if you turn off port six. So I guess screw both ways. Um, okay. It would be nice to have a control panel option in the case to disable. Could you uh, inactivate the Apple this Apple no. five point five? No. Five two five? No. That, that requires modifications to the case, which you know I may do at some point, but we'll just we'll What just about removing the Apple disk no, five point five drive from the OS? Remove Apple disk. Yeah, I heard you, I heard you. I guess I could. Okay, it's gonna be there. Intended to be run on Apple II GS hardware and not just on emulators, or is it uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it was originally built for real hardware. <coughs> All right, so 
Oh, I forgot. I, I, the, the it, heirloom is the word here. I forgot where heirloom came from. But you know, if you um, you know Google about, um, uh, uh, I can't remember what I, how I found it. Uh, maybe a board shell heirloom. You'll find the uh, source forge page uh, with it. Um, so I found uh, SH found heirloom. Found some other things. Nothing. None of that stuff works essentially. But like I said, I'm tempted to find out how well those things pour it in, and what works, what doesn't work, and and you know what's needed to you know make things easier uh, and more efficient. Um, with heirloom, one of the neat things that caught my uh, caught my eye with heirloom was someone spent time, you know, taking a bunch of standard Unix programs, updating the make file so it's actually more that to make it ANSI compliant. And um, I found out that the code actually pretty much compiles from the from the make files as is. Well, not the the make files will work unmodified as is under uh, GNOME. Uh, so I was happy to see that uh, the programs themselves won't compile as is because of limitations within Orca, or even some, in some cases limitations within the Orca linker. So um, I've I've attempted to see what it will take to recompile. Uh, or to you know add new features to Orca C, uh, only to find out that I can't get the darn thing to compile under my emulated environment. Um, it's not. It's, it's. I know it's my environment, but I've worked with someone else who has added new features to Orca C, and he can compile perfectly, just a standard source code without modifications. I can't succeed. It fails on me. Um, I have to rebuild my environment from scratch to figure out what's going on because I just know this doesn't work. So, and I knew that I didn't have time to redo all, everything before KFest. You know. To you know, find out how well this is going to work, but I do know that it's possible to recompile. I would really like to add, like say, long long support to Orca C, which means adding you know modifying libc um, for printfs and, and uh, there's a lot of stuff. Um, and so I've got a, a, so, the, so the, fortunately heirloom you know provides a list. You want your POSIX environment to have these features. If it doesn't, don't even bother using it. So um, I attempted to, to compile two things. Um, um, even without you know some of the some, some of the support, and uh, there's going to be an, uh, I'm going to mention two pieces of software that I've now introduced for the GS um, based on existing code, um, and you know we now use it under, under GNOME. And I'll mention that in the view. All right, so uh, within Heirloom, I can show you the list of um, files. So we've got all the commands here. Uh, the two commands that I put in because they were actually the easiest. Um, I hate to admit that, but uh, that was most of the other, others require a lot, a lot more work. And then I also picked commands that also did not uh, currently exist under GNOME. For example, I did do LS because there's an LS, even though there's a better LS. All right. Um, so the first command I did is PSR info, and who here knows what PSR info is? Besides Ian. All right. PSR info. I'll just run it right here is a command that shows the processors that you have online. And if I do PSR info dash V, which is what we typically do on the Solaris, oh, it's the Solaris command. And the heirloom, I forgot to mention that this, I started mentioning, but I didn't quite get as far, is a lot of this heirloom code is based on Solaris. So which also was another impetus to say, oh, this is the stuff we want. <laughs> or I want. <laughs> so this is PSR info, it looks just like it's as if you ran on Solaris. Uh, it will, um, based upon kegs, it will accurately uh, determine the speed of an unaccelerated, uh, sorry, uh, determine the speed of an accelerated system, your 2.8 megahertz, and your slow speed. So because you modified it, or was it that way? I know, I had to add all that code. I had to, I, I, I had to add the 2GS timing code because the kernel doesn't have that. Uh, Solaris expects it to be in the kernel, so sort of does sort of Linux. Um, so I had to write a timing code, as in, that I didn't modify the kernel, I had to write a different piece of code to timing uh, checks. Can I ask a um, fundamental question? Sure, of course. What's the relationship between GSOS and GNOME? Good question. Um, and uh, that's an extremely long answer question as well. I believe some of the interest for the, 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 the layman's way of looking at it is, um, GNOME is a layer underneath GSOS. It does patch some of the vectors for um, for file I/O, whatnot, for especially with the wild cards. Um, so it actually it's it's a slight layer above GSOS in terms of when you you know ask GSOS you know when you pass a like a file name with wild card in it, 
just I want some normal email to say that's a bad file name. But um, be, but just but uh, GNO patches some of those vectors to say, all right, we'll handle the wildcard support, return back to JSOS that would handle it correctly. Uh, but essentially, GNOME, from a kernel perspective, is a user toolbox. Um, I hate that idea. I think that's a stupid idea. The right approach is to take all those kernel calls and actually make them JSOS um, calls. Um, that's, that's the only way to do it. I mean, I want, I mean, the, the, way, the way it should be is we, that effectively GNOME is GSOS, and the two are, you know, um, symbiotic. Um, it should no longer be this user land application. Um, With regard to that, uh, so you have obviously considered whether uh, GNOME should simply be a standalone operating system. It's not, not an OS. What? It's not an OS. Can it be? Or do you want it to be? Or would it be better or not? Or what are your reasons? Good question. I, I do not want to stand up here and, and, and place claims because that is more of finding out who is interested in, in, in seeing how where this goal can be expanded to and you know put in a group situation. I am not necessarily the expert to say this is the way way to do things. Um, I Incorrectly, you know, made some, you know, you know, statements uh, months ago saying this is the way it has to, be, has to be done. But as I learn more and more about this, I don't want to say that is the way because it may not be the right way. Okay. Um, I, so um, I don't want to, you know, at this point, I <coughs> nobody knows enough to make it happen. It does require a bit more, um, a lot more eyeballs, and and those who are. I'm not. I am not a developer by trade. Uh, I am a Unix system um, So I, my my frame of mind is looking at this from a system perspective, not a develop, developer's perspective. So I'm learning a lot along the way here, looking at this from different views. Um, I don't even know what positive compliance means. I just know we have to have it. <laughs> so um, so that also doesn't help. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Good answer. I, I'm learning things as we go along. There's a question, yes. Um, could you could you slow this down just so we can see what it looks like at 2.6? Oh, meters? sure. Yes, we can. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right close button. So we can. So we got one. Because if I if I run it, I'm going to be.
before we, anybody touches anything, of course there's repositories. Um, you know, the big pictures is you have to think about, you know, a package system to, uh, for distribution. I, I'm just looking about saving the instance oh, now. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 and, of course. Then going of course, of course. Um, I, well, basically, <clears throat> one has to first go to Devin and say, Devin, there's interest. We've got people here. Right. Let's talk, you know. Well, I just, even as a history thing, I mean, it would be bad to not at least put a stick I, in the sand so people can uh, Devin might... Something might happen. To okay, you. I, I, I believe I used the wrong terminology here, and, and I will take, um, I, I will, and I, I believe I said something wrong. The um, GNO was reclassified as freeware specifically. The source is available, but it's freeware. Um, because of that, I don't know what this really means in terms of where right. things can go. Right. So, there's, so, no, we can't just, you know, among, among ourselves say we will do this. As far as I'm concerned, Devin makes that decision. Right. I, I have absolutely no trouble with that either. Uh, but, but so it's just more of a shared not, source. I, I'm source. not even going to even, even analyze what this means, because okay. I don't know. If there are questions. Um, I'm just wondering if there's any, you know, overall overall interest in terms of, you know, seeing what more can be done with this, um, where, you know, a lot of it is initially going to be development stuff. Um, I don't mind right now, you know, looking at it from the, um, you know, getting the Orca, you know, stuff up to snuff. Um, but, you know, not the best person, you know, from the Gano side of the house. Um, I have a lot of ideas. Um, and, you know, for those who are more knowledgeable, throw them out there, you know, and let's talk and, you know, see what's possible, what's not possible, what's not possible. see if anybody else might be interested in something like this. Um, and that's what, you know, all of this is about. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. At one point, you talked about making modifications to your own compiler. Yes. Um, is that free to be modified and, and then not distributed, or why? Uh, Sheppy has the right. Uh, I, I, the the answer to that question is I I'm not involved with the distribution of syndica of the Byteworks products, so I cannot answer cannot answer that question. Um, I see no problem sharing any diff files for my source code. Um, I believe that has been shared in the past by Kevin. Kevin shared back back on the uh, Syndicom uh, uh, forum site. I don't remember keeping any, any of his uh, uh, diff files, but I, I can ask Kevin any time, and so we can start with him. Yeah, the source code is available just, yeah. for license. Oh yes, yes. Uh, you can buy fifty bucks. You can buy the source code. Yeah, Sheppy did state a while, a long time ago, that he was collecting any modifications people did to the source code because yeah. he was going to put out patches. He didn't say he was going to put out patches. He was collecting, yeah. and he said he no. He, he, doesn't know he was collecting for the purpose of in the future putting it, out perhaps, patches. Perhaps, perhaps release patches. There's no right now. There, as far as I'm concerned, there is no, no plan in place of how any patches are going to be distributed. Uh, what we'll have to talk to Sheffy to map out a strategy. strategy. Um, so. But that package is well put together and certain. Uh, oh, yes, the source wise. I, I just, I, I can't build it because my environment screwed up, but other than that, Kevin got to work. Um, outside of Kevin, I don't think anybody except for uh, Mike Westerfield has compiled Worker C. I've not built it, but I was amazed at how well put together that was. That, that everything was there, all the documentation that's available, even if it's wrong, but at least it's there. Exactly. So it's a, it's a basis to start. And one of the neat things is that included is a PO file of a 32 meg drive with everything you need to run in an emulator. I mean, it's yep. minutes to get it running. Of course, that's why it took me two hours. <laughs> well, two hours first. Yeah. Compared to trying to install it off of floppies, it was I was dropping by and interrupting you. Oh, any additional questions? I know I didn't talk about porting. Um, again, that could be for those who are interested afterwards. Um, I can talk about, you know, these are some of the challenges I uh, faced with, you know, looking at the board shell, um, looking at Python, whatever, and, uh, or, you know, the stuff that I have compiled, you know, all these changes I did. Um, so. Short of the um, memory model, the compiler seemed to eat most of it up? Uh, it, it's. Um, Giant hammers were needed often. 
is it mostly build prompt or is it like C library? Oh, okay. good question. Let me, let me uh, touch on one thing, which uh, we can do with still <laughs> this group of garbage here. Uh, do you know so, define my source code, which is a. Can anybody read that? Or should I make the font bigger? It's okay. Basically, we just that you get it from uh, mirrors. The attempt to try and put it within Godot, you know, but I didn't do that. Uh, so we've got notes here. Um, so some of the notes, some of the, the no, one of the more relevant notes is status dot load. Now, now my middle uh, for those who were complaining yesterday, now my middle clicking works. All right, so we got library calls here. Uh, we go down to, yeah, uh, yeah. We got library, you got like the kernel related kernel or libc library. I think the libc library calls um, stuff here mentions. Um, no, I forgot what all the letters mean. I think there was back to the top to get the uh, C's test. C's test. This is the call of review. There's a list here of what a library calls, you know, are, you know, when we find the kernels, uh, here's the list, and what doesn't exist. Uh, just to complete, optimize, whatever model segment, it's not it, it's funny. Here we go. So this is a list of um, kernel traps. Um, as an example, we've got, you've got the kernel traps, you've got your library calls here. Um, if you're compiling something and, you know, you get an error, like, couldn't find a reference or whatever, check this file. See if that was in a different library file. Um, I can't think of a good example of one that I ran into. Um, but the kernel traps were more interesting in terms of, you know, one of, one of the things in SH was DeepRig. And it turns out DeepRig was not implemented. And Jawe, this is Jawe's notes, and he says, you know, let's not even do DeepRig. Which he's right that we don't want to, you know, start, you know, allocating old big giant uh, areas in the stack. Um, which also means, which means that these applications need to allocate from regular memory, not stack memory. So, um, should deep rate, you know, work incorrectly and allocate from memory and not from the stack, or should the code be modified to allocate with malloc instead of deep rate? Um, you know, I'm, I am not the best person to know what the best answer is. So, um, yeah, that's one example that I ran into, and I use this file a lot to determine. Does this, does this exist? Does it not exist? And, and I start with that. And the header files, well, header files, let's not even deal with the header files. The header files are, are uh, there's usually you know, more commands in the header file or more uh, library calls that are listed as in the, in the header files than necessarily what the libraries actually include. So you don't you can't rely on the header files. Not to mention that curses is not compatible with uh, term, I, term iOS. But that was, you know, from you know day one, and, and that was never ever fixed. And you know, I was delving, you know, 14 some odd years like that, and you know, still in the state. So another problem I ran into, you know, earlier this week dealing with that level, and I, I just manually hacked my own curses that I just put in the local uh, application, and um, not worrying about a whole system be fixed for this. Since I'm, since I'm not certain what the right approach is, but you know, I got slur, so I should you know, once you sit down and you know, look look at it from look at it from scratch, or you know, Linux or BSD. I don't care what what you know, uh, Unix. If more people, if there are if a general interest, as a general interest, to determine as what the best um, uh, platform to choose from, something has to be picked and and um, go from there. <clears throat> so it's actually um, right at my point of uh, when I'm finished, uh, at when I'm... <laughs> All right, that's uh, Eastern time. That's why I'm looking at five o'clock already. <laughs> yep, <you're done. laughs> yeah. So any other, any other questions? And since I don't seem to see Melissa here, and hopefully I'm not scaring her away, just still talking up front. <laughs> yes? I just wanted to say that I really enjoyed your presentation. It made no absolutely no sense to me, but it was really well done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Um, I, I was. Uh, it was sort of funny when um, a couple months ago there was a comment made in RC that 
there will be a lot more people looking at a technical um, aspect of the Apple IIs than previous K-Fests. So I thought, hmm, and that's one, another reason why I went down, <coughs> down the Gnome route was maybe I should do something more technical, something, you know, non slurs or non, you know, something else. And, um, and I said, okay, I can do something more, you know, technical, and yes, I, I, I took it to the next extreme. <laughs> Thank you for uh, uh, recognizing that. <laughs> and hopefully I didn't, you know, for those who are uh, developers <coughs> by trade, uh, hopefully I didn't, you know, mangle too much stuff along the way. <laughs> Developers or other type of technical. Yes, Mike. are we going to continue this conversation? Or are we going to you know, go forward? And so, uh, you know, right now, I don't see Melissa. And, uh, hopefully, I don't scare her away while I'm up here. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, He's talking project. I mean, I mean project wise, not. Oh, not project wise. Not right um, we have a day and a half of KFest left. So, I would love to talk about this more because I've been really, really thinking about this for, for a while now. And well, I've, I've thought a lot about you know 2GS stuff over the last several years. Okay. Uh, looking at ways of you know, doing second site support as a real hacky way of getting you know um, higher resolutions and more and well, not necessarily more colors, but higher resolution. Um, and so I've looked at a lot, of, looked at a lot of different things, uh, but a lot of it's a lot of work, and not and, and in a lot of cases, I'm not the best person to do some of the programming. Which you know, I. Sorry. Yes. What kind of regular user do you use GNOME for right now? GNOME. Uh, that's, that's okay. I make the reason why myself. is there's a desktop environment that is. It's 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 it is it is hostile for the normal user. Um, that Until is the best way to describe up, it. You're so, so uh, when NetHack shows up, Fossil users are low. Or, uh, we have Moria. Um, well, it's not there, but I, I found it um, found it um, at home at least, and I have to you know find out how to get it back onto. Um, I'll probably have to do or something. But yeah, there's. I, I used to play, play that once in college too, so um, <laughs> get my more again. <laughs> I got the two GS before. And actually, only play, I played for a little bit on, on the GS. Um, anyway. Sorry, didn't mean to distract us. That was more of a. Anyway, yes. Uh, back in college at Rockhurst. Anyway, yes. Um, and again, I, I, I don't mind continuing talking more. Um, I'm just a bubble, as, as Rob says, bubble of energy. And this is. This is the reason why I'm a bubble of energy is because I just am just so I just see there's so much potential. I would love to see what can be done next. Well, I could suggest you know two avenues of continuing this uh, beyond today. You know, one would be IRC on on uh, central.com, but the other one would be um, there's a news group out there dedicated to uh, Gano that has not been used. That is closed. Is it closed yes. now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, um, a, a year or two ago, that was officially closed because you know lack of lack of anything. Well, you know what? It still shows up on my news groups list. I just never see any uh, it, uh, messages. But most, many sites don't delete um, <laughs> properly. Um, okay. But it's officially, you know, this that group is now closed. If you try to go to Google, it's closed. Okay. Which not that we have to say Google's the whole source, but pretty safe. It, yeah. If they don't have it, there's <laughs> probably no one probably. Good luck finding it. Um, so <laughs> I, 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 I do keep a session open on IRC all the time. I am not, you know, always, you know, near, near it. Um, private message me. Um, the, way, the, way I like, the way I like thinking of IRC is I think of it as an extended email. Leave a message. I'll, and when I have a chance, I'll respond back, and assuming that you leave your computer all the time and your session open, you'll see my reply. Uh, be it public or private. Well, if it's public, as long as you scroll back, is you know long enough. Otherwise, scroll back or private will be you know, and hopefully you have your uh, logging uh, logging enabled as well. I definitely think you've got one and a half people looking at doing something. So I am ecstatic to hear. I'm, I was, if if um, I would, my my count was expecting five. Um, well, that that does is any pressure at all. You may all. have your Solaris. Minions, yeah, I have my fan club here, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to speak for them, because I can't tell when they're uh, He's going to be sucked into it no matter what, so it's okay. <laughs> he knows. He's climbing the trip in his brain. <laughs> we don't tell him when we do it work, okay? <laughs> when he falls asleep at his desk. <laughs> you ever seen that scene from uh, Total Recall? Let's go grab one of those clips. <laughs> Poor Ian, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, well, since we got some more time here, I'll demo. Oh, did I just have to make up for it by helping me get this on my GS. 
damn you. So uh, apparently, apparently, um, I'll be found in Dean's room tonight, and we can talk about Gano because he'll be mucky with Gano. So we can talk, you know, all this fun stuff. I actually, I just saw one of these on my Netflix. So, so we can have a few units here. There's, the there's a, a good point there that. Uh, there probably should be a ready to download distribution of an image. I, yes, I'm, sorry, I'm just not going to have time like to do to that. Or if I do, I'm going to distribute it because nobody should, we shouldn't all have to reproduce your I, pain. Yes, <laughs> as much yes. as I love your pain. Yes, yes. Yeah, no, no I'm I, I, <laughs> watching your <I>, pain. <laughs> that was one of the things I was actually thinking about maybe getting done. And of course, I realized that there was no way I could. So I just you know, scaled back a whole lot of ideas and said, let me just you know, concentrate on no. Well, it sounds like you'd have to do it a couple of times to know what uh, versions and really what yes. what the build is going to do correctly and incorrectly. Y y y yes, and, and people want a beta test, we can certainly throw some things things out there, but um, I, I realized that and I... Just put it out there. Yes, yes. That will, that will ease people's interest into uh, actually producing. I will consider that uh, for um, what it will take to get more people involved. Thank you. I'm not a developer, but I'll beta test. Yeah. yeah, so that's what I'm saying. If you put up an image, people will download it and say, oh, I can't figure it out. I guess okay, it works. Yes. Okay. And I was just taking a quick look through, and it looks like it's just editing some scripts to use different paths or be able to supply a path. It might be able to at least have like a single disk image or like, and then a couple blank images to put in and just have something that's a lot simpler to run with what we've got now. Yeah, the complex part is the Orca. Um, Copy. Oh right, right, and then that's that's the part that I was you know I, I wasn't thinking about Orca. Uh, I don't so have that's Orca. the part. That's the part of where everything else is easy. The Orca part is the part I'm yeah, worried about. Orca, so. uh, it has to be some sort of audio detection or, or prompting or something. And then again, I again haven't thought through everything because of the limited shell. And if we get a decent shell, everything changes. And I realized that. And you know, I want a better shell. Yes, I know that I'm about to be. Um, Booted, booted. So, thank you, everybody. I would like to talk more later.